All right, everyone, we finally got the Splatoon 3 Direct. Now, I'm gonna be real with you guys. There's so much stuff here that I'm only gonna focus on the base multiplayer for this analysis, or else this would be like an hour long. I'll be focusing on primarily new info and sharing a lot of the details from the website. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. We finally get to see the updated Squid Surge. It seems it has a bit of a delay before you go above the ledge now, but the jump height seems to be a lot higher, and it now has the glow that means you can deflect attacks. We also got the Squid Roll, which is a very quick turn in the opposite direction. And this does still have the parry effect that we mentioned before. We still don't know what exactly this means. We'll have to wait to test it. There are very few changes to gear. Bomb defense up has been renamed sub resistance up, so it might no longer work on specials anymore. And the other ability to be replaced is main power up. No more damage up in Splatoon 3. I'll take it. The sub resistance up has a new effect here, mainly that you can resist effect from toxic mist, which is cool. Next is intensify action up, which is a new ability that helps us squid roll and surge, basically doing two effects. It decreases the amount of accuracy you lose after using squid roll and surge, and if you perform them consecutively, you'll lose less speed, which is basically the downside of these movement options. Using them over and over will slow you down and make you less accurate, so you don't want to use it too much. On top of this, we know re-rolling gear is still a sea snail thing, and now you can do something called boost star power. So the way the star power up actually works is you can go above three stars up to five, but it won't give you more slots. Instead, you gain more experience with the gear and can get chunks faster. And adding abilities is the new one, which can finally change the main ability! Thank god! You can also save your gear sets to your specific weapon so you can easily change into your favorite sets. This makes it way easier to equip things fast. So we have our first new stage, Hagglefish Market, which seems to be really detailed and I love the aesthetic of being over water like this. It looks amazing. I'd say the layout actually looks really solid. It's pretty open so it'll probably be a more long range favorite stage, but as you can see there's quite a lot of places to move around. I like this one so far. We got Hammerhead Bridge. Oh my god, I was so happy for this. The map no longer has the grates on it, and the layout has been changed quite a bit. Though it's now a very different stage, it still looks pretty open and has a variety of paths, so I think the stage is still gonna be very good. Just, you know, a bit less of what it used to be without the grates, but I'm still okay with this. The stage, it's back. The water level drops look awesome. The spawn area actually looks drastically different, but the mid is pretty similar, and the platforms on the side still work. I'm not sure how I feel feel about this new layout because it does seem smaller, but it doesn't seem like it was changed enough to be a bad stage. It just might not be as good. Also, there's some single player jump pads, so that's pretty cool. So we have four returning stages, and as of now, they're basically the same. I think for Mako and Sturgeon, that's fine. Inkblot will need some additions on the sides, and Wahoo World, I'm sorry guys, this is not a good stage. Definitely the weakest one we've seen so far, but honestly, it's the only stage I can call actually bad out of the 12 we've seen. I have to say, I only expect expected 10 stages on launch. This is a lot more, and I'm pretty happy with it overall, so nice job. Post-launch, we get two new stages. Flounder Heights looks incredibly similar, but mainly that, well, it's less high. But I'm okay with that. It still keeps all the options that makes the stage work. As for the new stage, this is a really weird angle. It looks fine, but it's just a bit hard to tell how exactly it looks and plays, especially since we don't see people actually, you know, playing on the stage. So I can't really give any thoughts on this one right now. So this is the second new weapon class, the Splatanas. We know of two of these, and this is the first one. Its paint looks not great, to be honest, but it has decent range, way more than brushes. The charge attack seems to have a little bit more, but still not a great amount. However, what it does have is a dash, which has a direct sound effect, by the way. Here we get to see the damage. An uncharged slash does 60, the swings do 30, and a full charged one does a whopping 100. 120 damage. I'll go over the kit later, but I actually really like this weapon. It easily has the most options out of anything else in the game, and I think that works quite well for it, but it will still need to play for kills. It seems like it's a very difficult weapon to master, which I like. This is another variant of the Katana class, and it's a literal chainsaw. It also has Burst Bomb, which is insane. This by far looks amazing, as long as it has a good kit. So this is Ink Armor 2.0. It's even on the end zone. But instead of giving you just armor and HP, it gives you a bit of a boost, both to your movement and to the squid roll and surge along with its accuracy as far as I can tell. These can be handed to your whole team, but it requires going near the deployed special. I've said before that I want a speed boost special, and this is perfect. Being near your team in order to give them out to everyone means it doesn't have the design problems armor does either. I think it's practically perfect. This is awesome. 
I can't wait to know a bit more details about what exactly gets buffed. For now, we know it's intensity action up, the new ability, run speed, and swim speed. Though I wouldn't be surprised if something like ink res or sub defense up was also present. Now, this is my favorite of the new specials. This is Echo Locator 2.0. It launches beams in a wide radius that does approximately 35 damage, considering three of them kill. This is the perfect twist on Echo. Jumping gives a back and forth damage for an extra effect and the location. I absolutely love this. It's so smartly designed. Amazing stuff. And here is Kraken 2.0. You basically charge in a direction and then slam on the ground with an explosion. When looking at it at slow motion, you can see that there is actually an indicator of where you're going to go via these blue beams to alert the enemies, and a path showing exactly where you go. So the special is very predictable. The other notable thing is either this special can block attacks or you have extra HP because that Hydra should definitely be killing. Maybe you are fully invincible at that point. It's hard to say. It's a very predictable special with a very linear path. But outside of that, I honestly really like it and I think it'll still be solid. And it's awesome to see Tetra with an actual special. Finally, like with Baller, you can see there's some end lag and a stumble animation before you're able to act out of it again. So, Tena missiles are back. So, this is the equivalent of Wahoo in terms of the stages. It's really bad for the game, especially when put next to all the other Splatoon 3 specials, it really clashes with that design and not in a good way. It could be reworked, but this is a topic I'll have to talk about more in another video. Inkjet returns, and this one looks like specifically it's on the machine due to the gear on it. Inkjet will probably be a lot weaker in this game without armor, so I'm curious to see if it gets any changes. You see Inkstorm from the Undercover Umbrella that looks basically identical should still be the solid special it was in Splatoon 2. And we see the Range Blaster here with this gear, Yarwall's gear, which is important because right after this Inkstorm, we see them using Ultra Stamp. We already know Octobrush has Zipcaster, which means this is probably Range Blaster special. I gotta say, I am a fan of it. It looks really awesome and I'm totally there for it. Small other note, this 96 has a glow, and I do not know from what or why. Maybe it's a glitch because they don't really talk about it, and it doesn't look like they squid roll. Finally, we got Booyah Bomb. So my prediction that Booyah Bomb and Stamp would come back because they were barely on anything was correct. This one is on the Gold Arrow Spray, which is our first second kit we've gotten to take a look at right now. It should also still be really good. I hope they adjust the HP multipliers a little bit, though. There's a lot I want to say about all these new specials, but I'm going to save even more detailed thoughts for its own video. So for now, let's jump into the kits. I just went over a few of them now, so to recap, we know Machina's Inkjet should be incredibly useful for comboing with the main weapon or giving it nice angles, really solidifying it as an aggressive kit. Just keep the fizzy bomb, please, from Splatoon 2. Petra has Auto Bomb and Reef Slider. This weapon finally has a kit. I think Auto Bomb is nice for poking, and the special is super good for going in. Range Blaster has Ultra Stamp, which should fit with its aggressive kit and make it really good against objects. I'm hoping for a bomb sub like Spot Bomb, Fizzy, Torpedo, or Burst Bomb. Undercover has Inkstorm, which could help its damage, I guess, and provide provide more support, it needs a good sub, man. E-Leader has Echo 2.0, so don't be surprised if it gets a burst bomb. This special is nice for it, but now E-Leader has to get much closer to get value out of it, which might be difficult for it. Gold Arrow Spray has burst bomb. Depending on if it has a supportive or aggressive sub weapon, it could be a very interesting kit. Here we get to see the kit of the Splatana Wiper with Torpedo and Ultra Stamp. It's a very aggressive kit, and I think Torpedo works well for it, both as a potential combo sub, which is very important for this weapon with its minimal damage, and I think they know this considering the second one has burst bomb. But anyway, both subs also help as a poking tool in neutral. And back to the regular katana, I think the Ultra Stamp is great for increasing its aggressive potential. I like Sprinkler, but if it's in the same spot it is in Splatoon 2, this kit is not very good. At least the Triple Ink Strike is nice for some support. Splat Dooley here is clearly very inspired by the Kenta Dooley kit, which I actually really like. I think the Dooley having Crab Tank and the normal Spluttershot having Trizuka is a cool dynamic between the weapons. I won't spend too much time on all of these, but any weapon with a kit from the second trailer onward is unchanged, such as Rollers with Carling and Big Bubbler. We do know the points for special is 180, which is new though. And they gave Gluga the K-Gal kit. I think it's going to be way more fair on this weapon, honestly, because it can't paint as much, which means its ability to output Booyah Bomb is much lower. And honestly, this is easily the best Gluga kit we've seen in either game, so I'm really looking forward to seeing just how well this thing does. We have Tri-Stringer with Toxic Mist and Killer Whale 5.1, and yes, the website later does confirm it is not Disruptor, it is Toxic Mist. Splash now has Crab instead of Zipcaster, which I think is a slight downgrade, but we'll still be fine for 
giving the weapon more range. Pro and 52 are unchanged. We have Fizzy and the new Kraken special for Aerospray. Fizzy could combo, but it's not as good as Burst, and I think it's more supportive. While the special is more aggressive and gets you really far in, which is hard for Aerospray to deal with with its slower kill time. 96 has Sprinkler and Ink Vacuum, very similar to the kit in this game, but it doesn't directly compete with Junior or Enzap now, since those have different specials. So if you want an Ink Vacuum support, this might just be your pick. And Junior has the third supportive special, Big Bubbler, along with Splatbot, very similar to its kit in Splatoon 1 and 2, and it's gonna be your same basic weapon. The Splatter Shot has the kit we've seen before, V Jet has a Line Marker and Ink Vac. Hey, a special it has to move forward with! Jet will now be healthy for the game. Sploosh has the ultimate combination of the Vanilla Sploosh and Sploosh 7, which should be insanely good. And Zap has the new Soda Special and Suction Bomb, so it's gonna play very similarly to Zap in Splatoon 2. And Luna Blaster has Splat Bomb and Zip Caster, so I guess my hopes for a Zip Caster Range Blaster might be dead considering how many specials are in the game. I stand by that I think it's gonna be really hard for Luna to get in with Zip Caster since it'll be really predictable with the short range, but maybe we can still see it work. We also have some more kits here. We have Ink Brush with Killer Whale 5.1, we have Flingzer Roller with Tenon Missiles, and we have Rapid Blaster with Triple Ink Strike. Dually Squelcher has the Wave Launcher, and honestly, outside of Ink Brush, I think all of these have good synergy with the main weapon, and even the Ink Brush one isn't bad. Heavy has Sprinkler Wave Launcher, though I do wish it got something to help it with Chargers more. Hydra Spotling has Auto Bomb, which is meh with it, but Booyah Bomb, which is really nice for it, and 190p is slightly cheaper than the Custom Hydra in Splatoon 2. We know the normal Dynamos kit. It has Sprinkler and the new Soda Can special, so it's basically like the Gold Dynamo Splatoon 2. And one more kit they really tried to hide from us, as you can see, Auto Bomb and Big Bubbler for the blaster here. And that's all the new kits. Here's a complete list of all the weapon kits we know so far for Splatoon 3. Moving on. Except no, we're not done, because in a Game Explained video, Dapple has Beacon, Splash has Suction Bomb, Squiffer has Point Sensor, and I'll get to that, Rapid Pro has Toxic Mist, and Rapid has Ink Mine. Oh, and Squiffer has Big Bubbler, but I don't really trust these screenshots fully because some of them had to have been changed. First of all, there's no way Point Sensor is the game with how similar it is to Line Marker, and second of all, Splash we know has Burst Bomb and not Suction Bomb, and Bomb Launcher isn't in the game to give it one. The nail in the coffin, though, is that that Squiffer is not the right one. That's its old model, which means these are old images, and a lot of these might be placeholders. While some of these kits might carry over, I can't confirm any of them, so they will not be in my list. For a small note, while it wasn't officially confirmed, we have seen every single Splatoon 2 sub weapon besides Point Sensor, which has been reworked in a line marker, so all of them are back. Rotations are back, I'm not happy with it. We have the modes back where zones and tower control are basically identical. I can't tell any changes with these, so they seem very similar. Rainmaker, on the other hand, though, has checkpoints now. Also worth noting on the UI, it shows you have the Rainmaker as your special and on the top of the screen, which is amazing. Honestly, I really like the checkpoints. It fixes Rainmaker being too fast without slowing down the mode too much. Also, back in Undertow Spillway, we can see two checkpoints on Rainmaker, and you only have to go through one of them before being able to score, which means you have options on some stages, which is even cooler. Clam Blitz requires only eight clams to make a power clam, which is awesome. Other than that, it seems about the same. Holy, this testing range is so much better. The big dummies are back. The triple reticle of the bow looks cool and it just looks amazing. However, the pain and damage on the bows looks awful, so I hate to be a downer here, but I gotta point it out while we're there. That is pathetic. Hey, though, while we're on irrelevant details, it makes a cool H3 sound effect. You can also be in the training room while waiting for a match, which is awesome. More importantly, though, you'll be able to do it with friends. For the testing range, it says the dummy is no dunce. However, it will retaliate with enemy ink so you can practice defensive maneuvers. So the dummies will actually have a way to fire at you. We have a replay mode with codes so you can easily access it. Oh my god, this is going to be awesome. You can do so many things with this, and it allows so much better review. It's just so cool. I love it. I'm so happy we finally get an actual replay mode. It's gonna be so nice. Also, using this system here, you're able to look at actual matches without having to resort to the Splatnet app, meaning you can see your deaths on here. And you can upload battle replays, possibly directly to YouTube. You can recon any stage at any time. I don't have to get people for footage. Thank 
god. Though if you want, you can also do recon with friends in private battles, so that could also be pretty useful with how long the match timer is. Okay, next up, let's talk about the Splatfest changes, because I'm actually a big fan of these. We now have three teams for Splatfest with the idols present, which look pretty cool, and we have a normal phase for the first day, but the day two has been entirely overhauled. It is now a two plus two versus four, with the winning team from day one being in the center. This is basically a comeback mechanic. This is a really cool way to shake up the gameplay, and it's going to be interesting to see how it feels to be on a team with just a partner rather than a team of four. There are also two new little special icons here, which are the Ultra Signal and a Giant Sprinkler. Ultra Signal and the Sprinkler of Doom actually work together as one thing. If you get the Ultra Signal, one of the members of the new band Deep Cut will give you a Giant Sprinkler that will help you to control area for the end of the match. There is also now 333x battles, which is insane. The Splatfest T is back, and it does have Ability Doubler, so that is still in the game. Hopefully it won't be banned from Nintendo tournaments this time. So next up is the new rank system. Now, while this is awesome, the way it's described is super confusing. So confusing that I didn't even understand it fully until FLC talked about it in his stream. So I'm going to show you what his explanation was so you can understand as well. Basically how this works, you have solo ranked and you have like you go for five wins before you get three losses. And the way it works, I think initially, like this isn't going to be here. You're going to have to pay points, right? So what you do is you pay points to activate like this five win, three loss thing. And you want to get as many of these as you can before you lose three times. So you might get like three wins and then three losses and then that's it. You have to pay more points. You might get five wins. You might get one win, whatever. Like you, you, you get a certain number of wins, then you lose three times and you're done and you have to pay points again. As you get at higher and higher ranks, you get fewer points for winning and, and the cost goes up which is really good that's it's very similar to the splat one version of this just without the deranking and with a bit more of a individual losses hurt less it kind of reduces the effect of those losses which is good in splatoon 2 it's like s s plus you know zero s plus nine x right in splatoon 3 s s plus zero s plus 10 blah, 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 s plus 50 right but then at the same time you have x like, once you hit S plus zero, you can do X rank. Every three months, they're going to come out with a bunch of weapons, presumably like a new map, and they're also going to roll over the ranked mode. If you're at S plus 10 or higher, you return to S plus zero, which means if you want to stay in X rank, if you want to do X rank from day one of the new rotation, you have to be at least S plus 10. You get to S plus 10 in the Anarchy Battles, so you have to do some Anarchy Battles, quite a few I would imagine, to get from S plus 0 to S plus 10. And that is so that you can stay in X rank. If you are between S plus 0 and S plus 9, you get bumped down to S, which means that you cannot go into X rank at the start of the month. So if you are playing Anarchy Battles, and you sort of gradually rank up, you'll be able to do X rank next month, at the start of the month. And you'll be able to do X rank as soon as you get to S plus 0. This is actually going to be fun to play. Right? This is fairly low stakes. What's going to happen is, if you just get home from work or school or whatever, and you're just like, you know what, I feel like playing Splatoon, what you're going to do is you're going to hop on and you're just going to play Anarchy Battle. And you're just going to be able to play, right? And it's low stakes. If you lose, who f***ing cares? You just lose some points. Like, it's not really a, a big deal. Which means you can take new weapons into this mode, you can level gear in this mode. This system is very, very, very important. The fact that this is here means that you're going to be able to actually play the video game. The ability to just log in, play a bunch of games, not really care whether you win or lose, just play, right? So this is basically a casual league mode where you can hop on and just play the game with a bunch of other people. You can play this solo too. So like, if you don't like Scorch Gorge, Eeltail Alley zones, you can just play the other mode. So there's two ranked rotations going at the same time. And presumably when X rank comes out, there's going to be three. If you, if you count turf, you can play four different rotations solo. That's a huge, huge, huge deal. This is really important. Splatoon 2 never had this. Splatoon 1 never had this. There was never a way to just play with people. So not only does Rank X have better matchmaking, but you have an easier time playing with your friends on multiple rotations and more casually if you just want to level up gear or play for fun. Next up, if you have some Splatoon 2 save data, you might want to know about this. Now, you unlock weapons with a Sheldon's Point system in this game, which can even be used to unlock weapons early if you use enough of them. Connecting your save data from Splatoon 2 will give you three golden Sheldon licenses that you can exchange for main weapons regardless of level. So hey, if you play Splatoon 2 and you want to play your favorite weapon day one, you can. You can join 
went Anarchy levels right away from the beginning of the game, which is amazing. And you'll start with a higher rank based on whatever your rank is from Splatoon 2, and you'll be matched with similar skill level players. So I get to start day one with my favorite weapon and skip turf war to level 10? Yes, please, I will jump straight into ranked. All right, before we end this off, let's cover a bunch of smaller things that I couldn't really fit in their own section. So there is a splashdown icon here, but it's probably a single player only thing because they did not mention it in the special section. So do not panic, and I think it would work fine as a single player ability. PBs in future will will get room codes, aka keywords, though this will not be available on launch. It will be a phrase, such as hashtag turf war splits or hashtag splat zones fans, and that makes a channel that others can connect to. So every three months along with the new catalog, we will be getting a new series of weapons. So that seems to be the main way the DLC will work rather than one every single week. Rank X will be added in post launch. You'll be able to choose your region and it'll have better matchmaking, which is awesome. It seems like the seasons will be three months with five matches for placements rather than 10 placement matches and one month. League Battle will be returning in a bit post-launch, but it seems like it's going to be a little bit different. Mainly, it has special modes that are going to hop in, so that should be pretty interesting. Sun pointed out that the Dynamo Vertical Flick has way more painting range now, so the flick might actually be useful. And Ollie has pointed out that the boxes can move. Cool. And that's it, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to do a bunch of smaller discussions later, such as the specials in the game, maybe one on the maps, how good the Katana weapon is. So subscribe if you want to stay tuned to that, and I'll see you guys next time.